which meant that if the customer had more than one office or in different cities, the solution would be useless. The another one was limited to Wi-Fi coverage. So uh, for a customer with a big area, Wi-Fi coverage would not be accurate or would not, would not be effective. Plus, like, wiring router one kilometer away sounds a bit crazy. Apart from that, even after installing these uh, solutions in the market, they would still need to do some of the manual calculations. Uh, sorry, they had to do the calculations manually. Uh, so for the solution, our partner used Vialon, but he used it with style. He changed the roles of units and drivers as we see them. So he installed the GPS tracking devices with RFID readers into buildings and gave RFID cards to, to the workers. In this case, the buildings would be units and the workers would be drivers. In Vialon, as we, as we understand it. So for example, if a worker is leaving the office A to travel to office B in a different city, the uh, reports will tell us exactly the hours he spent in office A and office B, plus the timing between the buildings will tell us exactly the time he used uh, using the company vehicle. Plus the coverage was covered right away because he used regular GSM devices, and as we know, GSM devices has like about 100% coverage in the big cities. Uh, and the installation of GPS tracking devices into buildings is relatively easy. On top of everything, to provide the service, our partner developed, developed a custom interface and removed every, everything, all the modules except leaving units and drivers, which, and he renamed them into buildings and workers. So what they have actually received as a, as a result. Um, after the implementing the solution, the, imp the discipline uh, for, of the workers uh, improved. Now they would know exact hours spent uh, of each worker within or outside the office. They could punish those who would be like, late or would not be enough in the office or reward those who are actually putting extra hours to work. Using Bialon, they could do schedules and shifts, which, which meant that they could control the workers and the timings that they want them to be in the office. They could also delegate the workforce, literally which also contributed to the, to the efficiency. Uh, since we all know Vialon can be accessed from anywhere, and the accessibility was also good, so the manager of the company could actually monitor all of his workers sitting in the office or drinking coffee in the coffee shop, it doesn't matter. Thanks to our community, we have a chance to discover interesting projects like this. Uh, the, our partner used the tools that we all know and we're fam familiar with, the solution using less than 30 trackers can tell us exact whereabouts of almost 300 people. It's a delight to see that our partner used something, uh, used the other one to create something simple yet functional to create the solution which is actually demanded in the, uh, in the market. Uh, that's it for this case and I'm passing over to Anna. KPI 
AI system in order to see the most efficient and the less efficient drivers. They track the unloading time and compare it with the volume of cargo. So now the solution is helping customers to be able to prepare for the delivery process. Their management is also able to see whether the delivery is done or just skipped. They also implemented a special bonus system to those drivers who managed to reduce uh, the waiting time in order to motivate them somehow. So thanks to monitoring tools, now the waiting time is reduced. And that is a great example of how we alone uh, can help both drivers and their management to improve their performance. This case is a real demonstration of how our API tools can serve as a great engine for closing almost any customer's requirements, even though they might seem challenges sometimes. API has opened so many doors and so many new market niches that all of you can offer innovative solutions at your local market and have no equal competition at the same time. And now I'm passing the word to my colleague Karina. where the client has faced the issue of his delivery drivers constantly overspeeding on the roads without noticing it. This became a big issue as the penalties in Europe can reach up to 200 euros sometimes. This concluded in a big losses to the company as he couldn't detect who was driving a particular car at the time when the penalty occurred. Um, the client addressed this issue to our partner and asked a solution which would notify both drivers and the operator um, when the speed is closely approaching to the maximum allowed at that part of the road. Main concern was here of how to notify a driver that he is starting to overspeed. Obviously, constantly checking the phone and chatting with the operator is not possible due to busy roads. So our partner approached this issue by installing a buzzer inside the car, which was triggered by a command once notification of our speeding would come to the alarm. And in order to control who was driving the car, actually, uh, they supplied all vehicles with the RFID authorization system. Um, with the reports, the client managed to analyze the performance of all drivers and detect who was not following the traffic rules. This drastically minimized the losses for the company. Previously, as they couldn't detect who was driving that vehicle, they had to pay the penalties themselves. But now, they could address it to the actual employee who has uh, made the penalty. This might sound as an easy solution from both hardware and the alone perspective. Mm -hmm. However, such problems are present in many regions. <coughs> this case shows how quickly and efficiently such issues can be resolved and help the companies in different regions. Thank you very much, and I pass the microphone to you. Thank you, Karina. <clears throat> My next case comes from uh, Uruguay. Besides having an you know, awesome football team, they also have interesting cases. Air Liquid is a world leader in manufacturing uh, industrial uh, gases. These gases are used in all, all sorts of uh, uh, you know, uh, industrial applications. So they produce uh, gases like nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. Some of these things are, you know, pretty tricky substances and have to be handled with a lot of love and care. So, an accident during transit uh, can be quite disastrous. If you remember the Terminator movie, you know, <laughs> this thing spills and you break into a thousand pieces. So, pretty volatile substance. So, heavy vehicles are also restricted, like in most, uh, you know, uh, cities, to uh, you cannot use the the any other lane except the rightmost lane. So if you deviate from the right lane, you incur heavy fines. So the, this was one of the other things that the, they were trying to reduce. So uh, identify risky driver behavior that could cause potential hazards, and then uh, lane departure, uh, 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 you know, fines. So our partner in uh, Uruguay uh, was Max, uh, Maxat, not Moscow, Max, Maxat. They proposed installation of ADAS. Now, I hope some of you know what ADAS is. If you don't, I'm not doing a very good job. <laughs> so ADAS is Advanced Driver Assistance System. Uh, it gathers information from uh, the driver's uh, face, face recognition camera as well as a camera facing the road. And from that, uh, it will monitor uh, things like, okay, 
uh, this is uh, so the, the, with this what they monitor is things like harsh uh, uh, acceleration harsh uh, uh, harsh cornering as well as proximity to the vehicle in front which all constitutes to hazardous drive as well as um, pr uh, pedestrian uh, you know if, they, if it detects any pedestrian on the road that also constitutes as a violation so uh, in order to do this in order to detect this they produce a custom dashboard uh, with, which will monitor the driver's KPI so Basically, the driver binding reports, yeah, as well as the eco driving uh, values. So both these reports were combined and using VLR API, yeah, wow. the dashboard, wow. yeah, the, the dashboard was built. Uh, this is the dashboard that was built. So essentially, what happens is the data is gathered with, with API, and this dashboard that you see is built with. Microsoft Business Intelligence, off-the-shelf software. With the off, with off-the-shelf software like BI, as well as you know, Zoho reports, and there are co countless other applications, they were able to uh, build this dashboard, which gave all the KPIs of driver violation infractions, as well as the distance driven. Now, the result of all this was, uh, client was able to easily identify the, uh, you know, the, the violations. They were able to retrain uh, uh, sorry, uh, retrained driver on a safe transportation of hazardous goods. A substantial reduction was observed in uh, infractions as well as fines that were paid for lane deviation. And you would, they were also able to train these uh, drivers. As some of you have already uh, may have experience, uh, there are varying degrees of success with ADAS in this region itself. And, uh, you, you may also have tried uh, using ADAS. The most beautiful thing about all this is there's not a single menu item on VLR for ADAS. But still, our partner was able to, pro pro uh, to prove that you can do ADAS successfully and come up with a fantastic product. So this is how VLR comes into force. Using existing systems, you're able to provide new solutions that was not envisioned before. So that is the power of using VLR. With this, uh, we will move on to the uh, Q&A session. If you have any questions on all the cases, on the five cases that we have presented, please uh, go ahead and you may add, uh, ask them. And, and I'm not the only one who will answer them. No, 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 you're the only one. Please go ahead. Uh, what model was uh, was he using for, uh, for this solution? Uh, well, the, the sensor? Yeah, GPS wise and camera wise. I'm not familiar. I'm not sure about the device, uh, the, uh, the the tracking device. But anything that re can receive RS four eighty five, RS two thirty two, will be able to handle that. But the the, the, the yeah. sensor specifically was mobile eye. Does that answer? Yeah. But you can use all, all kinds of other. Uh, now even uh, the uh, Streamax. Thank you. Uh, and for the first solution from the Egyptian company for the bakery, are they here in Dubai? No. 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 Oh. But they were in Yeah, they were in Egypt. Compliments. <laughs> <laughs> so you're I have to go to the next. Any, anything specific you are interested in that? Yes. That's anything specific? Any, I need to read it. Oh. <laughs> Now I pass uh, to uh, Valeria, who will continue with uh, the cases. Thank you. So uh, the next project is about waste management and not only. The end user is a Cameroonian comp company responsible for public sanitation. It deals with the collection and treatment of solid waste pro produced by the households. There were a lot of challenges. Our partner was called up to resolve with one solution. Where are the drivers and what the, are they doing right now? Do they collect waste? Do they follow the route? Do they drive accurately? Do they steal fuel? Um, so the company knew almost nothing. Uh, Camtrack offered the customer an intelligent solution. They installed trackers on trucks, so the dispatcher was able to monitor garbage trucks activity uh, in real time. They also installed angle sensor to count um, number of loadings 
uh, the garbage truck did during the day. Uh, all the vehicles were equi equipped with uh, GPS, tracking, uh, GPS trackers, which supports canvas to monitor fuel consumption. Uh, this company has a lot of departments, and all the departments are in charge for their own areas. So all the vehicles uh, were divided into several groups and assigned to a certain territory and route they should follow by schedule. Um, there were 4,000 geofences created and important for this project. Big geofences was aimed to mark the, um, the area and the route the driver should operate on it. Each big geofence has a, small uh, has a set of small zones which were aimed to mark the precise location of the containers which should be, uh, which should, uh, be collected. Uh, Eco-driver reports were used to, um, to score drivers and check what driver was bound to a certain vehicle. That helped to determine the best and the worst drivers um, and uh, score, uh, score their activities. So, um, various notifications were created. For example, <coughs> not notification on overspeeding, uh, on hard braking, harsh acceleration, and so far and so forth. Uh, since that time, the dispatcher was, um, was informed about units location, their activities, fuels, fuel spent, garbage collected, uh, and not to mention the percentage of work completed by each driver uh, each day and uh, the scope of work completed by the whole department. With one project, the partner managed to close 100 of the uh, customer's needs. And um, I know that some of you may think, Waste management is not a big deal. Not a big deal for you, maybe, but for the customer it is. As a result, the customer received one interface that was able to cover 100% of their needs and uh, something so simple for you uh, for, as for the integrator and something for so difficult for the customer to be achieved within one solution. And so thank you very much and I will pass my word to Gautier. come across different interesting projects to track uh, buses or mixers or trucks or light vehicles. What if the project was about all of them together? Our partner in Sri Lanka used Vialon to... <laughs> that wording. Uh, our partner in Sri Lanka used, uh, used Vialon to win and dominate like, in the project over three major telecom operators in the country. Others were offering like unknown software and uh, it was mediocre. The project was for a big construction company. They needed to attract buses, trucks, uh, concrete mixers and light vehicles and all in one place. They had a specific task for each type, like scheduling the buses, the, the pickups, uh, delivering concrete mixers and the materials. However, all of them had the same problem. Fuel theft, bad driver behavior, and timing. The results were bad uh, for a company because they were, they were losing money. The drivers were late, and uh, with concrete mixers, the material could go bad. They, they, managed, they managed the solution somehow, but he it was, it was still lacking a lot of uh, finesse, so they needed a solution all in one place to be able to be monitored. So for the implementation, our partner used Nimbus for buses. They could schedule and monitor the buses at, at, at all times. They, for concrete mixers, they used uh, notifications to trigger alerts in, in case that they would be late. And they have applied fuel level set sensors and driver identifications for all types of vehicles. So in case if the driver would want to steal the fuel, they would exactly know where it happened, who did it, and uh, how much he stole, specifically. They also uh, applied real-time alerts for fuel fillings and reports. Custom service intervals would help them with the maintenance. From the first results, they've managed to caught six drivers immediately. <coughs> they let them go, which improved the uh, discipline of the other drivers at the same time. They have manually calculated and they have told us that they have saved about 80% of the fuel after the implementation. 
it sounds a bit too like too too good to be real. So if we assume that half of it, even 40% for a fleet of 200 vehicles, would still be a good good number to consider. Using the service intervals, they have decreased the maintenance cost of the vehicles. Again, they have a huge fleet, so decrease in maintenance would actually help them to save money better than apart from the fuel, which made the customer very, very happy. The best result in this specific, specific case was, was that our partner using our solution had won the project over other telecom operators in the country. They used the complexity of the project as it had many different vehicle, uh, vehicles to track, they used this complexity to work for them, and they used the complexity to make and create an opportunity for, for themselves, and using the features that we have, they had the upper hand over competition. Uh, that's it for this case, and I'm passing the word to Anna. breakdown 
farm of the machinery and a loss of funds for its maintenance for the company. So uh, the company have addressed this issue to our Australian partner and asked to help them with a solution where they could ensure the safety of their vehicles at all times. Also, they needed to control um, the servicing hours and location of the vehicles. Um, our partner, with the combination of the correct hardware and the alone, managed to come up with the easy solution. So the device that they have used for this case um, could already detect the rollover accidents because it had the angle sensor built in already. Um, and, sorry, um, plus they have also implemented our new solution Fleet Run, uh, which was used to control uh, runtime for timely servicing and notify about any upcoming maintenance to the client. The whole solution gave an overall picture of the usage of the vehicle to the client, and they were able to um, control that has been used as intended and make sure that maintained in the correct time frame. Um, this is a great case that shows how to avoid any additional expenses, <coughs> such as unplanned maintenance in the businesses involving construction industry. Thank you very much, and I pass the word to Nisha. Thank you, Verena. All our previous cases uh, are from the rest of the world. My last business case comes from much closer to home. Some of you may be already aware of the turmoil uh, going on in uh, Iraq, Baghdad. And our partner has made it a point to make it to this conference. I wish to thank uh, Integrated Solutions, Rafat and Murtada for being here today with us. <laughs> Our hearts and minds are with the people of Iraq. So this case is from uh, Iraq, and what is interesting is uh, they have also helped uh, in a way to improve the security situation with this particular project as well. The International Airport in, in Baghdad has a regulation due to security concerns that no, uh, no vehicles can approach within 20 kilometers uh, of the airport uh, premises, uh, from, to the airport terminal. So what happens is, uh, if you want to take a taxi, you will have to go to a taxi terminal, which is 20 kilometers away, and board a taxi and uh, go to the airport. The same process is followed when you get, uh, when you arrive at the airport, you take a taxi at the airport terminal and come back to the taxi terminal, which is 20 kilometers away. Uh, it looks pretty fine. They have an existing tracking platform, but there is no way to stop the taxi from getting out anywhere or getting in anywhere. And the driver would pocket the money. So it's a huge revenue loss that was happening. So we needed to reduce the trips run by drivers on the side, uh, as well as reduce the out of our trips. So they were also tampering with the GPS tracking devices and disabling the device. So if there was no way to uh, know where the trip was originating. And then voila. <laughs> Do you see those dotted lines? Okay. So the par our partner introduced the most important element to this system. What do you think that was? That one. No. They introduced the alarm. <laughs> Thank you. With the alarm, what we did was what they did was. They first encased the device in, G in IP67 encasing, and they geofenced both the terminals, the taxi terminal and the airport terminal. And the, the, when the taxi approaches, when, when the passenger boards the ta uh, taxi and leaves the taxi terminal, a, uh, with the existing system, there was already the existing ERP system where they would give a, uh, a list of all the passengers, and the existing ERP system recorded the taxi as well as the number of passengers. And there was um, I button as well as a, a relay that will disengage the uh, starter button, a, a starter motor, so you can start the vehicle. So that enabled a complete um, um, understanding of where the trip began and where the trip ended, as well as who, who the driver was and how many passengers were there. So a combination of the exit receipts from the existing ERP system, and the driver binding geofences were combined 
along with the right report. And with that, you have a combined revenue report. The report was generated twice a day. So this way, without investing a whole lot of money into replacing the existing ERP system, which they have already invested in, making small but very significant changes, like introducing, putting in relay, uh, you know, introducing VLON, they were able to change the entire revenue system uh, of this whole operation. So with this, what happened was they increased the revenue due to elimination of free rides, as well as eliminated the out of hour trips by using the uh, NCASE IP67 uh, casing for the existing uh, GPS tracker device. So this is how, but without making a whole lot of changes, you can add small positive changes and bring in the uh, expected revenue from uh, uh, this business operation. Now, uh, this ends our uh, session. If there are any, all the business cases, if there are any questions for all these, any of these business cases, you may please ask. Yes, go ahead. I have, I have a question about the food distribution uh, case. Why why was it important for that customer to track the cage? Is it is it uh, is the cage expensive? Is it uh, I mean is the cage? Where, where is the relevance of the cage itself here? I'm I'm talking business wide. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I can answer that question. So uh, customer um, customer cage is very important because uh, this is. Uh, the way how they transport uh, freshly picked uh, vegetables and uh, other goods that uh, require cages. And um, he had a great number of them. Uh, still, um, those supermarkets um, mm -hmm. uh, delayed cages turnover. Uh, cages were sitting there for, like, for days or even weeks. Uh, so if, even if you have like 600 cages, but uh, your customers never return them on time. Uh, you, you cannot like transport uh, uh, some other goods. Uh, this is why they needed uh, to know location of each case uh, precisely. And uh, uh, with the help of the solution delivered by our partner, uh, they now know exact time when the cage was dropped at the particular location. Uh, and because they use the flash speed, uh, as well. This information is also sent to their own uh, cage turnover uh, system and they now know exactly uh, this is an automated solution uh, when the supermarket uh, must return uh, that cage. They give just uh, a couple of days, maybe two days and if they do not ret return this one time uh, they just uh, uh, give them fines. Which hardware? Uh, so they use uh, their own hardware, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, some PLE uh, tags. If you can use, uh, the hardware is not important, but the BLE is what is yes. important. You need a BLE, BLE enabled is the, like, core technology. Bluetooth low energy tags. As a follow up question over there. Just to add a note about uh, boxes, cages, I don't know what's the cost of each cage, but I had a customer who uh, also tracked his boxes, his uh, trucks, and the pallets, uh, every time they're coming back to uh, the warehouse, they pass by an area, the vegetable market, and they were selling the pallets for 10 to 15 dirhams each. So the manager was wondering, why are they going to that area? So he went by himself and he saw truck after truck, coming and selling their own pallets, and he said, Gracie, you saved me over, I don't know what the amount was, uh, per month of pallets. Thank you for that, Ash. So the cages probably have there was a question here. Yes, go ahead. Regarding the waste management uh, case, uh, so I saw that you had uh, geofences for yeah. containers. So was there like a, a plan for each driver to collect specific containers or was it like the overall uh, progress of all containers? Yes, it was a plan established mm -hmm. and uh, a route. Sometimes uh, the driver debated this route and territory. They entered the territory uh, of, the, of the neighboring driver where they should not operate. And this driver came and see all the containers are already emptied. 
So that is how they, they they, they need to manage all the process and all, all the, like, uh, can you imagine how much fuel you spend on, on, this, uh, on, on the waste management? And in case you're just one driver do uh, the half of the work, other do like twice, uh, twice much, uh, but still the <laughs> containers are not collected, some of them. So, they, uh, so that was the scheme. The drivers and all the departments should operate only in their area and collect uh, the containers completely. Because before, it will, the cycle was not stable. Uh, stable. Yeah. So was this done through Wyland? Yes, yes. completely, yeah. just yeah. through, uh, through Vialon and you, Japan. Well, all our cases are on no, Vialon. No, yeah. Just one of uh, yes. used in this case? Or was it the logistics? logistics? Sure. For the driver? To see the no, he just the saw uh, he just saw the containers. This little uh, there was rules mm -hmm. they uh, should follow a schedule, but uh, without so these were already communicated with the driver. Yes. Well, it's printed out, and you know, he has yes. this is my stops. So once he follows those stops, he knows which is his stops. So can we go a step further? And of course, that that is uh, that is possible. There are some cases where um, where logistics is used. Uh, for garbage uh, collection, it is it is already there because logistics can be used for dispatching any kind of uh, collection or pickup. And yes, we, we can talk about this. There is something that I need to talk about. We use it for cheap collection. Yeah, <laughs> there is an excellent case where it is used for optimizing routes for picking up students in schools. And uh, you can speak to Peter about that. They have already done that. If there are any other cases, <coughs> sorry, please. Uh, case number five about driver uh, violation monitoring. Uh, I want to ask about uh, yeah, did you use a camera inside the cabin of the, uh, of the vehicle to track uh, the driver behavior? Yes. Like he's eating, sleeping, yes. and so on? Yes. So, how can you detect if the driver sleeping during uh, driving? E excellent, excellent question. Now, um, the onboard computer on the camera, I mean, on the device itself, the ADAS device has a set of logic that is programmed into it that will detect certain behavior. Uh, I have uh, come across, I'm not gonna give any names of the brands, but already there are some manufacturers who are already present here, like Streamax is here, who will monitor the, uh, the face. It'll, there's a camera facing the driver, and there's one facing the front. So all ADAS systems employ uh, artificial intelligence to monitor the facial expression, the position, movement. So if he's smoking, drinking, uh, or doing any kind of activity that is outside the scope of his safe driving, then that would trigger an event. And that event comes into the GPS tracker, and from there, we can build any kind of response. There's actually one of my webinars available on this. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to plug that in. I need to plug that in. So please, I, please, I will, I will share that. That gives you a complete rundown on how this is done. Does that answer your question, sir? Yes. Subscribe now. Subscribe yeah. now. <laughs> All right. Now. <laughs> right. Uh, without further ado, uh, first of all, let me thank. Uh, this this concludes our session, so you can you guys can actually applaud now. <laughs> first, I would like to thank all our partners who have graciously, uh, you know, uh, allowed us to use these business cases. And it's a really tough job to get cases from partners, as you already know. <laughs> so every year we see a lot of cases, which is you know, uh, which are go beyond this track and trace solutions, and that actually uh, you know solve real world problems. And uh, and this region is one of those very active and very mature markets that come out with some very exciting projects. So that is one of the most important things that we can take away from all these presentations. And we also learned how uh, VLON, as it stands, can be extended beyond what is the scope of VLON. The things that we don't env envision that you are able to do. So if you find any of these cases useful in your business cases, please do not hesitate to get in touch with Tim and take it further, all right? I'm just kidding, you can get in touch with me at any time. I know you guys are doing that. So I really appreciate the, the interaction that we have had and. I would like you to take that further and always get in touch with the implementation specialist and ask us exactly how to do your projects. So that is what we are here for. I'm just reiterating that fact. 
And last but not least, I want to thank all my colleagues for presenting these beautiful cases and bringing them to life. Uh, Valeria, Karina, Anna, and Jawake.